All right, so if you have a uh, LG front loader, ours happens to be the Trom uh, model number on here somewhere. I've never seen it earlier today. Where the heck is that? Oh, sorry. There's your model number on this particular one. Uh, probably gonna have to pull the uh, water pump off of this one by the looks of it. Uh, the sheets, the sheets get nice and wet. Um, and then it sounds like it's trying to drain for about five minutes or so, and then it pops up this OE code here. So what we found is you got this drain system down here. You got this little doohickey uh, tube that you can pull out and drain off. Yours is gonna have a little different cap on there. I end up losing the, uh, the tip there temporarily. So I just put in a, put a bolt in there and zip tied it on. Uh, this thing is completely impacted from about here on that way with sediment from it never being cleaned out ever, ever, ever. So uh, what it did is somewhere here, there it is. You get this little cover that'll be in there. It's held on by one screw. And so take that one off, get it out of your way. It just pulls out. Then it took a cool container. It just happened to have the right size bottom here. Um, I just cut the little top off. I cut a little bit too much. I'll explain why in a second. Um, just cut a, a little slat at the top off so that it fits into this gap and then cut that bottom ring out on the cool container itself. You can kind of see the, the pattern that was on there for the bottom. Have it be the exact right size for this outside diameter of this guy. The reason I wish I would have cut this a little bit bigger because I could have taken out that screw and that screw and I was able to sink this screw into that cool-up container and I could have done the same on that side instead of holding the sucker. Uh, so I was able to remove my bottom drawer here on my my uh, elevator stands and now I'm gonna have to sit here and just suck it up and and uh, allow this to drain out. So we've already cleaned out this filter. I thought that would be the problem. Ours was not that problem. So. Uh, I'm gonna end up having to unscrew this guy pull that that filter basket out and just kind of hold this Under the lip and we'll use this as a funnel to drain drain off into this This little tub here because it made a mess the first time when it drains out If you don't have anything else to drain that water out and by the way, there's no standing water inside here at all It's all down in the belly of the tub um, So we don't we don't have any standing water up in here right now. Uh, But you'll see how much comes out of here. So it ends up draining into the bottom of this area here and it spreads itself all, all the way over there all the way over here and just made a hell of a mess so without further ado i'm gonna unscrew this thing and then i'll have to put the camera back on because i want to make sure i have a good seal on this lip off to hold it like this while she drains out and there you go looks like it's working fairly effectively so you just crack that one open and it'll, it'll start to drain out while well, you cover the, it's hard to show, there's a bottom lip on that filter device. And as long as you have this thing under that lip, maybe cut a little smoother hole than I did. You shouldn't get any runoff anywhere. I don't see anything dripping anywhere else. So this is actually working fairly decently compared to the mess we had a second ago. We needed a beach towel and two, two bathing towels just to soak up all the water that came out of here. Working okay. Better than the first time. First time in a hell of a mess. This is not too bad for a recycled whipped cream container. All right, and there is the net amount of water. We're talking uh, five inches of water by about uh, 20 inches long worth and 10 inches wide. That's, that's quite a few gallons of water down in there. So there's your Cool Whip topping container. I'd say it'd be better to cut no more than this is probably six uh, five and a half six inches i'd say cut about four inches of the uh, outside off of yours and then just uh again follow that that inside bottom ring around there hopefully you got your uh, quilt containers has a reasonably similar manufacturer on there and maybe it'll act as a guide but it was just the right size i wish i would have cut this a little bit more perfectly around there just was kind of wagging it and trying it out and this worked really well so what it's working really well for is that this tail end here it's just going to be a, a pain in the ass just waiting for this little dribble to come out 
Um, another key note is don't unplug this thing all the way just or it'll start coming out of the top area it'll start coming out all around this thing so just you know start easing it out you know a quarter turn at a time until you get a good flow for you and expect about uh, two and a half I'd say two and a half gallons of water easily to come out of there if you're not showing any water down inside your washer belly at all and then uh, we'll wait and I'll just go uh, have myself a coffee or a beer and and I'll wait for this to finish draining out all right and another uh, mental note there or shop note is unload everything out of there as well that that blanket that we had in there was absolutely just coarse saturated um, and that's what the slow trickle was coming from so this thing is uh, basically done draining and it's also a good idea to document what screws uh, come out of where for with the video so one of these shinies that's where that guy comes out of you got these two shiny three-quarter inch screws that came from right here and right here holding the uh, filter housing in we will call those filter housing in shroud all right now we'll have to unplug it and we'll come around the back side here and we will remove Sorry. We're going to remove the bottom. I wasn't expecting that actually. Right there. We're going to remove that bottom. And. Ooh, it's tough to get around. And. This bottom one, if it's there, I can't tell to get on my ladder. I don't know what jackass technician was in here before, but maybe they must have not marked their bolts and they end up having to replace and put something in there that doesn't belong there. And on this side, they just chose not to put anything at all. Either that or it's shaking out and maybe I'll find it down in that fuzzy mess down there. Who knows?